could have on the child's life. I'm joined by Suzanne Ford, who is dietitian advisor to NSPKU, a national society that helps and supports people with that condition. Thanks so much for your time. I think a lot of people watching have perhaps never heard of this, dare I say, until this particular case. Can you explain, first of all, what it is? Yes, that's right. Many people won't know about it. Although, if you have children, your children will have probably had their blood, um, their heel pricked and the blood tested at about 10 days of birth. And what's being looked for is high phenylalanine levels in the blood. That's an amino acid. What's missing in people who have PKU is a fully active enzyme that processes phenylalanine. So the levels build up and they're neurotoxic. That means they're toxic to the brain. So if it's untreated, that can, the a child who's affected or person who's affected can go on to develop actually brain damage. And there's a whole continuum of, or spectrum of um, problems that can result. And, and am I right in saying that this means they can eat only the tiniest amount of protein and therefore you can imagine the, the practical implications of that. Yes, you're right. So this is a highly restrictive and highly complex diet. It's not like any other type of diet. Um, we're talking about three or four grams of protein or maybe eight or nine grams of protein a day, which, um, so for instance, a gram of protein, that's one dessert spoon of baked beans. And some children might be not even able to have more than a slice of normal bread in a day. They actually have to replace all or a great proportion of the starchy foods in their diet with artificially made or prescribed foods. It's really restrictive, very complicated. It takes people about, we, we've surveyed this, uh, 19 hours a week to administer this dietary treatment and uh, tr not treating uh, the disorder isn't an option. Because I mean that surely is so restrictive on your whole life. You couldn't, you couldn't go and let your child eat at a friend's house because how could that friend's poor parents possibly deal with that or, or eat out of a cafe or something because the risks are too great. Yes, yes. So there's two points to this. One is that um, the dietary treatment is lifelong. It has to start as soon as the diagnosis is made and then continue uh, for the entire life. And the other thing is that it impinges on every single aspect of someone's life if they have PKU. So um, planning, everything is essential. There's no spontaneity. It's um, everything needs to be done with great care and attention. Um, and it's very precise as well. So if a child needs four grams of protein, they should have that because they need some phenylalanine. And the drug therefore, in essence, would do what? The drug in about 30% of people, we think, in the UK who have PKU, could activate any residual enzyme they have and allow them to double or triple the amount of natural protein they can have, which would have a radical effect on how much uh, ordinary food they can eat. Suzanne Ford, thank you so much for your time. Very, very interesting to talk to you. Thank you very much from the NSPKU. Thank you.